discuss another interesting topic. My name is Ogene Moko Mary Chukere, and I'm your host. On today's program, I have a guest with me with whom I'll be discussing humility. But before then, we'll be going on a short break. Stay tuned at the Wire News is up next.
welcome back from that short break. And thank you at Okoro Francisca for that Ajuwaya news. As I mentioned earlier, we will be discussing humility. And I have a guest here with me from the Editorial CDS group. He's a core member. He's here to tell us his insight on humility. So how do you feel today, Mr. Adeodu Akorede? Um, I'm feeling good. I'm great. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. But Adeodu, not Adeodu. Oh, sorry it's for fine. the mispronunciation. Yeah, it's all right. So Adeodu Akorede. Yes. So tell me, the word humility as a core member, you know, I'm going to be throwing a little more light on, just a little light on it. Okay. If I'm to say humility is just like someone with half loins bringing him or herself down to follow the crowd, mm -hmm. even when they know they have half loins to walk on their path and still succeed. You get? Okay. So, what would you say is the effect of humility to society? Uh, effect of humility to the society. One thing we have to understand is the nature of women, the nature of woman being demands respect. And that is the natural creation of woman. Everyone wants to be respected, everyone wants to feel respected, everyone wants to end their respect. So when there is humility in the society, the first effect that is going to bring to us is it's going to make us more structured and organized. Have you ever had this feeling that it's a normal thing when someone respects you? Let me just use this case study. When someone respects you, naturally, you don't want to fumble. You don't want to mess it up. So in, in a way, it makes you feel structured. It makes you feel organized. Now imagine that going around across the society. It makes us to be more structured. It makes us to be more organized. It makes us to be law abiding. Because you have someone you respect. You have someone that gives you the respect. And you're not like, okay, when you do something, uh, uh, someone that is respecting me, you now have to be disrespecting me because of what I did. You know, that organization will be there because you don't want to mess up. You don't want to fumble with that particular person that sees you as, okay, I respect this person, okay, I have this person in mind as someone I'm looking up to. So that structure, that organization will be there. That law abiding will be there because everyone wants to you know, maintain their lane and keep that atoms of respect. So humility for me is going to make the society more structured, more organized and free flowing peace. That is for me. It's really pretty the way you put it. From what you are saying, I sense mm -hmm. like in a community where there is no law, yes. There is certainly no law to break. So people will live anyhow. Exactly. So that means humility has to apply. If there is humility. So follow law, you have to be humble enough to follow law. So it is that humility to accept, okay, this is the law that guides me. This is what the law wants from me. This is what the society wants from me. It is that humility inside of you that makes you follow the law. Exactly. Because if you are not humble enough, oh, what will they do to me? Uh, and so, you know that word? And so, that word already remove humility. Exactly. So that's it. So, Mr. Akorede, yeah, me too. how do you, as an individual, because you have, you, you actually have a lot to say about humility, obviously, oh, and I'm actually yes. enjoying the show. Okay, thank so, you. again, what would you say, as an individual, how do you think humility affects you individually, as a person, not as a group anymore, not as an Affects me? Uh, yes, individually. Now, personally? Yeah. How does it affect me yes, an personally? Individual. It could be someone else, someone else, but an individual. Ah, uh, an individual. Are you talking about? Are you, am I taking it personal to myself or as an individual? Of course, it should be personal because if I say individual, you don't have to go and look for somebody else. It should be okay. you. Yes. How does it affect you? How does it affect me? Yes. Uh, for starters, I would say humility opens doors of opportunities. Exactly. Uh, there's this this era, this time that we are. Fortunately and unfortunately, your skill and certificate is no longer enough. Mm -hmm. So you have to have an extra edge. And what, what is that extra edge? That comes with character. And part of the character is humility and all that things that character comes with. But since we are centralizing this on humility, 
humility has opened doors of opportunities for everybody. So personal love for me, humility has opened a lot of doors for me. I said earlier that the nature of woman wants to feel respected. So when you give people respect, mm -hmm. what they do to you is when there's an opportunity, they will remember you. Especially this is a, a southwestern state, this is a Yoruba state. We cherish respect. I see, I see. We, we cherish humility a lot. So when you, when you are humble, when you respect people, it creates these doors of opportunities for you. So personal for me, humility has opened doors for me. Things that I don't even expect will come to me, and then I just got the call. So, 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 so person recommended you. So, so, so person wants you to do this. And as a result of, okay, you've been a good man, you've been a good boy, you've been respectful, you've been humble, you relate to all people. So personal for me, I will say, humility upon doors of opportunity. Another thing I'm going to say, it keeps you away from, from troubles. It keeps you away from troubles because people can easily testify for you. Because they are, oh, this person, no, it can't be, it cannot be this guy, it cannot be this lady. Because when they know you for who you are, for who you are, they tend to testify for you. But if you are someone that is not humble, that doesn't showcase humility, oh, Danny, who is the person? Oh, I don't know. You see for people to just say, I don't, I don't know, just, eh, no be me. That is, that's people for you. People just leave when it gets ugly. But when you are someone that give this respect, when you give humility to people, People tend to stand for you when things get out there. So for me, I'm going to say, open doors of punishment for me. It uh, keeps me away from trouble. And at the same time, it gives me that respect from people. Because I don't do past myself. I don't pass my boundaries. I, go, I do my things. I go by my lanes. So it gives, it makes people give you that respect, that regards. Mm -hmm. They don't talk to you anyhow. They don't relate with you anyhow. So that regards is there because what you respect yourself first exactly. it comes from yourself did you even respect yourself did you even give yourself that level of humility you have to hand it you don't demand for it it's what you give to yourself that people okay, give out to you in other sense it means humility plays a vital role in leadership you Ob know? obviously because for me if you are not humble enough then you are a waste of space in the leadership role exactly i i i have a lot to say when it comes to humility and leadership, but okay. this interview is not for me, you know, so I won't <laughs> steal your show. So, right. on to the next. Mm -hmm. Now that we are in the NYC sector, is our service here. Mm -hmm. So tell me, from CAM to PPA to CDAs, it's not our POP yet, so I'll leave that aside. Mm -hmm. How do you think NYC, what, in what way or have you figured looking at the way it is going, how do you think NYC teaches humility? How do they <laughs> come? Do you really think anything they are doing concerns humility? Do you think they are trying to tell you to be humble? Or is there anything um, they are doing to inculcate humility in you? Well, I would say the whole scheme of NYC teaches humility. The whole scheme, that's the whole concept of the scheme of NYC. When you're NYC, you just know that NYC is all about humility. And why it teaches you to be humble. The first thing is you leave your home, you leave your convenience, you go to three weeks orientation camp somewhere wherever you have to wake up by three or two thirty. Some some people wake up by two thirty. The lively part. Uh -huh. to, you know, to have your bed before things get out there and messy right there. And then by four you are out there at the party ground doing things that they all that and instructed you to do, not things that you want to do. And that is very humility. And that is where the humility comes in. So you have to be humble enough to do it. And if you try to, you know, to defy the other, you face the music. Exactly. And then after then, they tell you what to do, when to do, how to do. And even after camp, your PP, you have to report, you have to mark attendance, and then the CDS meeting, you have to be present, you have to come. Uh, everything has to do with following instructions. And if you are not humble enough to follow instructions, that means you are defying the other NYC. So NYC itself, the whole scheme itself, mm -hmm. tells you about humility. So NYC, humility, humility, NYC. Because you are following an order, exactly. which you must follow. And you are not humble, you can't follow the order. You know, sometimes where people come up with this term of 
since you already have something done, since you are influential, you are wealthy, mm. regardless of your status, I just people often call themselves humble, you know? There's something they will do. Okay. Let's take a scenario that I am a popular person, mm -hmm. like I'm popular in a child or a daughter of a popular person, a well known person in the community or in the state as a whole. And on the other hand, I'm not, I'm not saying that because you get my point. I'm just trying to prove a point. Or it could be the other way around. We have something we could get just because I am not influential enough. I'm not wealthy enough, you know. I just go for it. You that have the wealth or the influence, just go for it. On the other hand, I may not be displaying, you don't know, you don't know how people, you don't know what people really can do until you really get to know them. I don't know if you are getting my point. Hey, go on, go I'm just trying to I'm throw, trying to. just trying to suck on something from what you have said so far. Okay. Because it's really educating for people who doesn't know that humility is just like a bedrock in everything you do. If yes. you really want to succeed as a student, as a core member, even in life, generally. Generally, in everything you, even as a child to your parents. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this like we have parents who have their favorite, not because they don't love their children equally, okay. but because the, these children, the parents inculcate the different knowledge into them, then they go out, derive things from their peers, from their circle of friends, then they come home, all the characteristic that have been putting into them, they lost some of them along the way. And at that point, the humility is gone. But now as a parent, if you have a child that regardless of the friends they make, where they go, they still show that lifestyle that you give to them. That shows that they are humble and you will always be chosen. You get my point? Uh, yes, Not true. everyone will like you, obviously. But okay. if you are humble, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. people will definitely want to speak on your behalf defend you even when your name is being seen and the wrong things are being said about you yes. you get job recommendation you know it's literally paved way for you humility yeah, and that's right. i actually think it's it's really a beautiful thing to be humble yes yeah, you know i have beautiful. tasted humility all my life i've been humble mm. you know it will go astray sometimes but that's by the way so but at any point in life if you are humble it's really worth it because the stress that comes with being humble, I don't think it's more to the enjoyment and the peace that comes with being humble. You know, not not going I against think, laws. Uh, you I know? think the thing is this: when you talk about parents raising their kids, yeah. raising their child to be humble, mm -hmm. and then along the line, some went astray, and another line, some keeps being being humble. humble. I think being humble. And then your child goes on to keep being humble wherever he or she finds yeah. himself or herself in life. It's more about when you are raising a kid, as for me, for me, this is one perspective. When you are raising a kid, the first thing that you should imbibe in the kids is the fear of God. It's the bedrock of everything. It's like the foundation that you are going to be molding all their characters on. If you are if you are saying okay, you have to be humble, respect people, uh, give regards to people. It begs the question, why? Because sometimes people don't do things because they don't see the reason behind them doing it. Or they don't understand why they have to do it. So when you make the child understand this is the reason you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Because there is someone up there, the creator of man, the creator of the universe, the one that we ask us of what we did on earth, the one that to reward you for every heart you do to your fellow human mm. being and even to creatures. Impressive. So when you put God first mm. and you make them see why God is God, why they have to believe in God, why they have to know that God does all things, and afterwards it's all bringing other things like, okay, when you know God, these are the things that God wants you to do. You know, treat yourself, treat people nicely, be humble, be respectful. That is when other things will be molded on. So for me, I, I feel like those that were raised and then along the line, probably peer pressures, uh, peer groups, and then the society tries to derail them from the tracks. I would say 
my own perspective. I'm not a judge, I don't know, yeah. but my own perspective is such parade puts the cart before the horse. And when you put the cart before the horse, then you are prepared for an accident. I feel like they feel like, okay, this is what you should do. Do this, be respectful. We just be beating the kids. And the kids will not even know the reason why they have to be respectful. Exactly. But when we put the horse before the cart, mm -hmm. we tell them about God. And this time around, religion, yes, we teach them religion, but tell them about God first. It is when they understand the concept of God. Again, religion, humanity, humility, obedience, and other things will follow. So that is for me. That's beautiful. You know, I'm drawing a lot of lessons from what you are saying. Yeah. We have individual differences here, and lots of parents there who inculcate the right knowledge in the wrong way to their children. Exactly. Yes, even some of us can testify to it. You know, people don't come out to castigate their parents or anything. Mm -hmm. Every parent is a good parent. You That's know. True. Until we see the one that I'm behaving, but we don't know whose parents are though, although my parents are good parents. Yeah. Because I'm a testimony. Of people course, people I, can, have, I can attest to that. All right, that's good. So, people who have been with definitely say, yes, mm. she came from a good home. You know, you don't only learn. I'm trying to correct, and I'm not, I'm not trying to correct it completely, mm -hmm. but there's something you said about, you know, out of the 12, there's a Judah. Yes. In the time of Jesus Christ, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if we are digressing a little bit, but the digression is what it it has it has to be. It is very important to digress. You know, when Jesus was on earth and he taught his disciples, they were twelve. Okay. But then, even in all his doing, he never insulted them. He never called them wrong names or anything. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yes, but I still, do. Still, we have the ones that. Okay. You guess what I'm saying? Yes, no, I, guess, say, I get what you're saying. Say. Good. Get, calm down. I, 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 want to, I want to put in something in what, yes, what you're so, saying. No, we calm down. Calm okay. down. Okay. Definitely, no matter how the parents try hard, mm -hmm. we have humble parents that raise Kids rascal that children. Astray, right. Thank you. We have pastors, we have religious leaders that have okay. children who have gone astray from the ways of the mm -hmm. Lord that they grew up in. Okay. They were raised in a biblical home. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they might be the Bible child at home, but they go yes, out to I do understand. something different. They don't, they don't preach what they learned. You know what I'm saying? I get you. So that is by the way. I get you. So now to the question. I would like to quote him. Oh, like oh, sorry. Something. Continue. So let me just put in something. Okay. You are right. Yeah. Very right. But do you also know, using the case study of Judas, do you know that Judas knew what is right? Of but course. did what is right. Everyone knew what is right. <laughs> no, some did not know what is uh, right. Yes. Some exactly. might not know what is right. Mm -hmm. Some might just do it just for doing it. Okay. They might not know what is right. They might not know what is right. So Judas knew what is right. Okay. Because he, he felt remorseful. Yes, he did. Okay, so that's that. We are going to be hosting you next time. So we hope to discuss more yeah, on okay. this topic, humility. We might not be having this topic in regular, but we should see something from humility because we're actually having a nice conversation. Thank so you. thank you so much, uh, Adolu Akore Thank you for modern money. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the wonderful discussion, and we we'll so hope to have you next time. So we thank you to the Osho State Broadcasting Corporation. We thank the editorial team, and also to our wonderful viewers. Without whom, there will be no Ajwaya.com. I remain your host, Mary Togenemoko Mary Shukere. And before we see you on, we'll see you next time. Remain blessed.